The Adirondacks, a land of vast wilderness, unequivocal beauty, thousands of lakes and ponds, miles of rivers and streams. And it is home to the white-tailed deer. And where there are deer, there are deer camps. Welcome to the Adirondack Deer Camp. White-tailed deer, you're young and strong. White-tailed deer, you're young and strong. But if you're not fast, you won't have long. If you're not fast, you won't have long. Johnny Hunter will find you quick, and you'll wind up in a stew. What does deer camp mean to me? Well, it's the place I go to get away from everything that bothering me, everything I have to deal with at work. I think uh, the biggest thing or the most important thing is the time that we get to spend with our friends and family. To share stories, uh, play some cards, relax, have a few beers, and basically when you get up, you're ready to go hunting, you're right there. It was not unusual to come out with five or six rack bucks in a week's time, so we used to do very well with that. Well, I think the camaraderie is one thing. Uh, the ruggedness. Having that time together and, and the great outdoors is nothing better. So, uh, doing the things that uh, you're, you, you think your forefathers did. I guess I'd have to sum it up just by saying tons of memories. The Adirondack Deer Camp is an institution steeped in history and heritage. Deer was a central aspect of Northeast Native American culture. If you look at the deer as part of a sort of a circular ecosystem, the deer were the source of the food, the source of the clothing, and also the source of many of the utensils that were used by both men and women. By the 17th century, English, Dutch, and French settlers had a stronghold in the Northeast and had established trade with the Native Americans for many goods. By the end of the 19th century, timber had replaced the beaver pelt as the Adirondacks' number one commodity. Lumber camps were scattered about the region. Those old days with French Louis and some of the other market hunters, they shot a lot of deer, there's no doubt, and they fed a lot of lumber camps. But they also lived in a time when that resource wasn't as measured as it is today. At the beginning of the 20th century, Deer populations were all but decimated, and the first game regulations were put into place. By the time World War II had ended, deer populations had rebounded. Big game hunting didn't start until after World War II. Hunting in the backwoods in places like the Adirondacks or anywhere in the Northeast poses a lot of challenges, but that's probably what makes it such a great institution. The last half of the 20th century has been by far the heyday of the Adirondack Deer Camp. When I was in high school as a kid, we all, uh, if you saw somebody driving by during the deer season, they would probably yell at you, did you get your deer yet? Hunting <laughs> uh, in the Adirondacks for over 40 years, um, starting in Pottersville with an uncle when I was 15. My father uh, had a hunting and fishing camp on the Hudson River and uh, that was our second home. My favorite thing about deer camp, I think, is the food. Good morning. There are many different types of deer camps in the Adirondacks. Like a, it's a small house. We dismantled that, moved it up into the woods, rebuilt it, 
because before, prior to that, we had a tent. I mean, we got, we got it made pretty good there in the tents. We call it tent dominium. It's 60 feet of tent, 16 feet wide, three wood stoves. And... Well, I'm a member of the Ghoulie, the Ghoulie Club. And we're a full service camp. We have a, 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 cook, a cook building where the caretakers live and we have our meals. We have outbuildings, the cabins where everyone sleeps. And then uh, when you hunted down at Baker's Mill, there was a, about four campers down there. Uh, we ate one and of course you played poker at night until 8.30 and then you went to bed. My favorite things in the evenings after the hunt is, again, spending time with uh, your friends and family. Um, maybe playing cards or uh, telling jokes or a lot of times reliving the day's events. The tradition of telling stories became part of Adirondack camps, whether it was the log camps or the deer camps. Some of them were pretty unbelievable. Lock on that old gun was rattling just like a snake when all of a sudden, boom, off she goes. Just that trout came up, nailed that, and the two geese behind it, skipped that ball off the water, took it, hit that rusty old side, cut that musket ball in two, half it took out the buck, half it took out the doe, and the recoil from that thing going off knocked him 15 feet back in the water. He came up spitting and sputtering. He had a beaver in one hand, he had a muskrat in the other, and those old bib overalls he was wearing were so full of tiny little brook trout that a button come off of his fly, went 45 yards, and killed a partridge. And that was a lucky shot. And some of them that seemed unbelievable were absolutely true. I was laying on his side, sound asleep, at eight years old. And I woke up to a boom and saw a monster deer rolling down the hill. Well, that night the wind blew in. Uh, we could hear trees crashing all over around us. Um, I was scared to death. I didn't know if I'd ever make it home again. <laughs> One of the memorable things I remember with my dad, he couldn't believe that I had shot that deer, and I have to confess it was a stroke of luck that I hit it. Today, the future of many Adirondack deer camps remains uncertain. It was pretty, it lasted for, for 12 years, but the game warden came in and, uh, one time, and uh, he uh, mentioned something to the forest ranger that we had to get rid of it. So we begged the forest ranger to let us have it one more season. So he did. What's happening in their Adirondacks with the Nature Conservancy, turning the land over to the state, and then the state requiring that some of these hunting camps be torn down and removed uh, within 10 years. I don't think there's enough young people getting into the, the, you can't call it a sport, really, but getting into hunting. You don't see a lot of young hunters come up anymore. I mean, very few camps that are out there that you see the you know young boys out there now, the 13, 14 year olds that you used to see. Then I invited my father to become a member of the club and since then my two nephews, and now my two nephews are bringing their, their kids to the club. So in my family, there's four generations that have been enjoying our place. And uh, we just hope it's gonna keep going for maybe a fifth. But I don't think it'll ever go away. I think that the experience is just too addictive to really ever disappear. I don't, th I don't see a day ever in the Adirondacks when the deer camps will disappear. Despite the changing landscapes, for many, the Adirondack deer camp will not only continue to be a favorite pastime, but a way of life.